After she was wired up and in bed, I would then go off to another room, use a random number table to get a five-digit random number, which I'd write on a piece of paper and slip it in an opaque folder. And then I'd come in and put it up on a shelf near the ceiling, a flat shelf. So the number was not visible to anyone down in the room, much less on the bed, but if you happened to be viewing the room from near the ceiling, you could clearly read the number. And I put a clock near the number also, and I told her, I mean, this sounds terribly preposterous, but I said, if you leave your body, try to float up to a position where you can not only read and memorize the number, but see what time it is also, and then try to wake up right afterwards so I can have an exact idea of when you had that particular part of the experience. Tart changed the number every day. On the first three mornings, the woman said she felt as though she'd left her body during the night. But she couldn't say what the number was. She said that while she was out of her body, she was in the wrong part of the room, or she was outside the building or something like that. She had no idea what the number was because she hadn't seen it. Then, on the fourth night, the subject woke up suddenly at about 3.35 in the morning. She said she'd just had an out-of-body experience, in which she'd risen to the top of the room. She claimed she had seen the number. She successfully told me that the number was 25132. Now, the odds of guessing a five-digit number like that in one try are enormous. So, I was quite excited, to put it mildly. Tart examined the EEG readings of the electrical activity produced by the woman's brain. At the point that she believed she left her body, they had changed dramatically. I had looked at many brainwave patterns of sleep over the years, and her brainwaves were simply unlike anything I'd seen before. When she had the OBE, the woman's brain was producing alpha waves. In the rest of us, these are produced in the waking state and are rarely seen during sleep. It seemed that while she was asleep, part of her brain was behaving as though it was awake. Anyone who was familiar with sleep wave patterns looking at them would say, this is unusual. I don't normally see this. Not long after that night, the woman moved away and she and Tart lost touch. It meant that the experiment was never reproduced and skeptics began to ask whether the whole thing might have been a fraud. There was no possibility she could know what the number was by any normal means before I put it on the shelf. The paper with the number on it was never visible to myself or to her. Was it possible that the woman could have somehow climbed up to look at the number? She couldn't get up to stand on the bed to look at the number because in order to do that it would have pulled all the electrodes off of her scalp which would have picked up so much interference that ink would have been flung all over the room from the brainwave recording. It would have been a very notable event. I would have been covered in ink. Tonight you could let your friends and family entertain you. Or you could watch Brainiac instead. Friends. Or Brainiac. Friends. Or Brainiac. Tonight at six on Discovery Science. At around the same time that Tart was studying OBEs in California, Stanley Krippner was running a sleep lab in New York. He read about Tart's experiment and noticed that the skeptics were having trouble discrediting it. How is this woman able to get those numbers? The only criticism that I have heard of that really makes any type of sense is that she had a collapsible mirror with her and she was able to unfold this mirror and extend the mirror up above the number and in the dark with a little flashlight beam the flashlight up to the mirror and read the numbers 
But as long as we're going to go along those lines, you might as well say, perhaps I made the whole thing up. And in fact, when people think that perhaps I have lied about this whole thing, I take it as a great compliment to how well the experiment was done that critics are reduced to that extreme. But if the results were authentic, the implications were astonishing. Was it really possible for the conscious mind to leave the physical body? Krippner decided to run an experiment to see if he could reproduce Tart's results. We had one medical student who claimed that he was able to have out-of-body experiences frequently. We said, fine, come into the laboratory and every night we're going to put a picture on a ledge above your bed. Nobody will know what the picture is because it will be completely shielded until we pull the shield off and see if you can dream about it. On the fourth night, Krippner witnessed a sudden change in the young man's brain waves. As he slept, waking alpha waves appeared. He woke up and said, I've had an out-of-body experience. And he said, the picture has a sunset on it. And sure enough, the name of the picture had the word sunset in it. We all know what it's like to have a nightmare, but for the victims of a mysterious condition,